Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk with some of the leaders from Convergence. Uh, today, joining us, we have Deborah Jartow, Deborah Jarko, Mary Berry, Deb Essen, Diane Totten, Eileen Hallman, and Melissa Weaver Dunning. They're all gonna be teaching at Convergence. So if you're not familiar with Convergence, Convergence is a wonderful fiber day event it's for seven days in July from the 15th through the 21st in Knoxville, Tennessee this summer. We have a variety of events that will be going on during this time. We'll have the marketplace, of course, where you can buy more yarn and try out that loom you always thought you might wanna get. We have exhibits, all kinds of exhibits the fashion show, keynote, tours, and much, much more. We have a variety of sessions available, over 120 sessions and workshops, seminars and workshops, everything from a 90 minute seminar to a three hour seminar and those one, two and three day workshops. You can save 25% by taking, by purchasing the convenient, the convergence value package. And you will need an HGA membership in order to take a class. <clears throat> Today, we have Deborah Jarko. Deborah is going to offer the class Weave a Ribbon Basket. This is a three hour seminar and it is Friday, July the 15th. Hey, Deborah. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Good. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to pronounce your name. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. You did good. <clears throat> so, well, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Um, if, if there are any of you out there that have not attended Convergence before, I just want to give a big shout out to you and say, you know, it's not only are the wonderful classes and exhibits and marketplace to just blow your mind, it's just so nice to be amongst a group of like-minded fiber lovers, weavers, spinners, felters. It's just a wonderful experience. And um, I really urge anybody, you know, that hasn't been there to go because I loved it. When I was a new weaver, I went to my first convergence and just felt like I had found all these people that I was already, you know, they were my best friends. So um, please try and come. But this class that I'm teaching at Convergence is about uh, making a little basket out of grow grain ribbon. And it's really a fun thing. It's a three hour class and um, you walk away with your basket pretty much made. I'm gonna share my screen here. Whoops, I did that in the wrong order. Uh, share my screen and there, there we go. Okay, now you can see my screen I'm guessing, right? So um, this is the kind of basket that you'll be making. You can see here that I, I chose three different colors of ribbon for this particular basket, the lime green, the teal, and the purple. And so you weave them together and it's just, it's a fun, easy process. Um, you start off with, well, why am I not uh, advancing? There we go. You start off with, um, you know, just your, pieces of ribbon cut, this particular one is paper, but you start off with your strips of ribbon that we're gonna cut and then we uh, weave them together, fold them up to make the corners of the basket. And you can see here is one in progress where the basket is uh, pretty much made and we've got the uh, tops of the basket bent down and pinned in place. And on this particular piece, I chose to put uh, beads around each one to help it first of all, to help hold the ribs of the basket in place or the ribbons that are creating the basket to, to um, wrangle the ends in place and also as a decorative element. So that's um, really kind of a fun thing to do. This, we'll talk in class about other materials that you can use. And this particular one, I took a tour guide map that I had had from somewhere and made a basket out of it. And that was kind of fun. And then here's some other examples of um, the, the one on the left is a brown paper grocery bag. And I used little tiny brass brads as the fixtures on the top to hold it together. And then the one on the right is made out of a roadmap and it has just a long 
piece, a strip of ribbon around the top of it. So it's really fun. There are lots of things you can do. And it's wonderful to make baskets. And you can see here's a little picture of one where um, I'm storing yarn in my basket. And then you can see fruit in the basket in the back on the on the one on the right. So it's a lot of fun. Late, lately, I've been making some, my, my husband's a pilot. And um, I've been making baskets out of his old aeronautical charts, and that's kind of fun. And he enjoys, you know, putting his pencils in them or whatever. So it's a great class, and I hope some of you will sign up and take it because it's a lot of fun. I think people will be asking, how much experience would you need um, to take this class? Oh, for goodness sakes, you don't need any experience at all. Um, if you can cut your ribbon into strips, um, you know, that's, you're, you're pretty good. You can go. All right. Um, I didn't check to see um, materials fee is $5. Is there a list of things online of what they'll need to bring? There is a list online of things they need to bring. Basically, it's just, you know, some ribbon and it tells you how much ribbon you need and beads and a sewing needle and some straight pins. I think, well, and scissors. That pretty much covers it. Okay. Well, it sounds like a great, and this basket is much bigger than I thought it would be. This it's pretty. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Just remember, this is Weave a Ribbon Basket. It's a three-hour seminar. It will be Friday, July 15th, and it's Deb Jarko. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kathy. Bye-bye. Bye. Next up, we have Mary Berry. Master your e-spinner, a three-hour seminar, and this is Saturday, July the 16th. Hey, Mary. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Boy, e-spinners are the hot thing right now, aren't they? They are, and are you seeing my video? Not yet. Hmm, it's on. Well, this is unfortunate. Did you hit share screen? Oh, hold on. Share content screen. Start broadcast. Okay. Now it's saying I'm sharing screen, right? But I'm not sharing my screen. Well, let me punch some more buttons and I'll talk about the class. Okay. E-spinners e -spinners really are the thing right now. Um, they, you've got so many more people making them. They have become a lot more, um, available to people than uh, they used to be. And I sure wish I could get this screen to share because I have yarn that I wanted to show you. Technical difficulties, technical difficulties. My okay, video is share screen down at the bottom. Uh, do this. Hold mine's, on. Mine's green. Oh, uh, well, that's clever, but it's not showing me. But if what you click I want. on that, it should show you what you can share. Screen. Everything on your screen. Start broadcast. Should, is there an image of what you want to show? Oh, how exasperating. No. Okay, go back and don't hit uh, start broadcast. Okay, now what are your options? Um, I've got video. I can see myself. That's what's so aggravating. Now, when you hit share screen, what do you have? Uh, photos. Does it show a picture of your computer? No. I'll tell you what. There's more than one way to skin this cat. Hold, All right. on, <clears throat> hold on one second. Okay, so you're not, you're still not seeing me, right? Yes, we see you, we just don't see your screen. Oh, well, me is what you need to see because what I'm about to do is turn the camera around. All right. Now we'll get somewhere. Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm at home today. Monday's my day off. So this is my e-spinner. Now, if you are familiar with e-spinners, you know that this is the way you see a lot of people using them. And that's basically spinning this 
somewhat thin yarn. I've got four pounds of Shetland that I'm spinning for a customer. But, and you see the e-spinner has some dials and then mine has some other little plugins uh, that, that help you control what it does. But what you may not realize is that you can also spin things like this on your e-spinner. And this is the way I like to spin actually the most. It's a bulky, it's spiral plied, it's got Angelina in it and all kinds of other uh, fun stuff for you to, to, to play with. And yes, you can spin this on the same e-spinner as you're spinning something much thinner. You can also spin things like this. Now, it doesn't look like the standard boucle, but yes, the definition is this is a wool boucle. And um, this requires a lot of hand movements. And people might be thinking, geez, my e-spinner like pulls my yarn out of my hand. How in the world could I take the time to spin something like this? It's all about knowing how to set your e-spinner up so that it will do what you want it to do. And that includes how fast it's going to um, take up on your bobbin. Here's another example. This was a super fun yarn to spin. It started with a bulky single, but it's got bits of cloth in it. It's got some auto wrapping. It's got just all kinds of bits and goodies that makes it a really interesting yarn to knit with or to weave. And again, it's all about how you set your e-spinner up, how fast or slow the take up is, how uh, fast or slow the uh, twist gathers into your fiber. One last example is this little guy right here. And you can see that's spiral plied, it's a bulky single. Um, there's just lots of things going on with it. So I guess my point is whether you want to spin four pounds of Shetland into what's going to be a three ply worsted weight yarn, or whether you want to spin something fat and bulky and fun and with lots of texture, you can do it on the same e-spinner. Well, thanks, Mary, that's great. Now, that's, what we, that's what we'll be focusing on in the class. Now, I know there's a variety of types of e-spinners, does it matter? It, it matters um, the same way it might matter with a wheel uh, in that you, you know, if you have hooks on your e-spinner, you might have a little more trouble spinning a, a bulky yarn, might have to tame that down a little bit, but no. It, it okay. doesn't matter as far as they all pretty much work the same, sometimes a different tension adjustment, but um, we can work with all of them. Yeah, the, um, there'll be vendors at Convergence selling the e-spinners too. So um, those of you who are watching wondering, gee, where can I get one? You can get one there. So yes. again, it is Master Your E-Spinner with Mary Berry. It's a three-hour seminar. It's Saturday. The, Vendor hall will be open Friday. You can get in there and get your e-spinner. And uh, I think it'll be great for all of you who've just gotten that e-spinner and you're just not quite sure how to use it yet. Thank you, Mary, we appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, we have Deb Essen. Hi, Deb. Hey, Kathy, how are you today? Good, you're gonna talk about double weave pickup, right? It's a one day workshop on Sunday. I am. I am going to talk about um, probably what people haven't thought about, which you can do with your little four shaft loom and turn into, into a 40 shaft loom. Really, seriously. So what double weave pickup is, is basically drawing on your fabric as far as I'm concerned. And because you're using pickup sticks and you are using two layers of fabric, and you're bringing the back layer up and the, leaving the top layer down. I'm gonna actually show you a quickie. This is, you might recognize this little picture of these. This is um, the very first double weave pickup I ever did. And it was actually for the certificate of excellence. And I have to admit that when I did 
was getting to this point, I was kind of a little, I don't want to do that. That's going to be really putsy. I just, I can't. I turned out, I love double weave pickup. Um, it is absolutely fabulous. I mean, look at all these different designs that I got all on a, basically a plain weave that is two layers and you're bringing the back side to the front and the front side to the back. And we'll be learning how to do that. This is a class, if you are comfortable with your loom and you consider yourself like an advanced beginner and on up, you will love this class. We're gonna have the looms warped before we do the class. It's a one day class. And we'll be talking about how double weave works. And then when you do the pickup, it's going to be able to help you understand how that double weave happens and how you wind up getting two layers and these wonderful designs. And it is way more fun than I ever imagined. In fact, I got severely addicted to it when I did it for the Certificate of Excellence. So I am deeply grateful that it's one of the 40 samples that you have to weave for the um, COE. And I don't know if you can see it very well back on the back. There's another piece that I did that has basically a Greek key um, design on it. It says, welcome. You can do letters. You can write messages. You can do all kinds of designs. I'm going to talk about in class where you can find designs in unexpected places. But really all you need to get it go at yourself going is some graph paper and a pencil and you can start drawing designs. We're also gonna talk about another kind of pickup double weave called thin weave, which gives you, um, instead of really super square edges, it helps you do curves and we'll be playing around with that. It's, it's just grand fun. I mean, if you've been thinking about it and going, you know, I just don't understand this whole double weave thing, will get you not only comfortable with doing the double weave, but double weave pickup and creating these designs that you never could believe would come out of your four shaft loom. In fact, you can even do them on a two shaft loom and it's awesome. It's great fun. And we will have good fun that day. And I love show and tell for this class because everybody, um, I'll give you some graphs, but then you're allowed and encouraged, I shouldn't say allowed, but encouraged to start exploring some designs on your own. And we'll be looking around at what everybody's doing and just ideas and light bulbs just start going off. It's so much fun. And, and that comes from someone who, when I first had to do it, went, I do want to do this. I really don't want to do this. And then, oh, I love this. This is great. So that's basically the class in a nutshell is how to draw on your loom and do it with two different colors. And you can do more than that, but we'll be exploring and it'll be a short day because you'll be going, I can't believe the class is over. I have so many more ideas that I have to play with. I have so many more ideas. So that's it. Deb, I, I love you. You're, you're just, your energy is so good. Even if I didn't weave anything, I just think I want to hang out with you for a day. Now, I just <laughs> want to remind folks that you'll be sending out the uh, warping instructions, right? How to warp their loom. Yeah, and that, those will go out about a month before the class, we have the class. Uh -huh. So people have plenty of time. I might even make it more like five weeks, um, just so people have time to pick out the yarns and to thread their looms. So if it's one of your, it's, I think this class is on Saturday, isn't it? Or Sunday? Sunday. 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 So it's, it's earlier in the schedule than later when we have the multi-day workshops and things like that. So you can have your loom all ready to go. And all you have to do is just set it up and we're ready to rock and roll. Or you can, you can do it while you're at Convergence in your room with that new yarn you just picked up at the... <laughs> Girl. You no, know, you Girl. will. And this, you can do either a table loom. You can do a table loom. Oh, absolutely. A table oh, wow. Loom. That's absolutely. Great. In fact, if that's what people are planning on bringing, and they said, I'm not going to bring my floor loom. Don't worry about it. Bring your table loom. It's, it's awesome. Deb, it's not that I don't believe you, but I'm going to check out your class and see. I just, 
That pattern's amazing. I just can't believe you can do that. So thank you so much, Deb Essen. Double Weave Pickup, one day workshop in July. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You take care. Next, we have Diane Totten. She's going to talk about Crip and Create. This is a three day workshop. It's Tuesday through Thursday. Hi, Diane. Hello. Good to see you, Kathy. Good to have and you here. Thanks for the opportunity to tell about my passion of crimp cloth. Um, it's a workshop for uh, adventurous, some beginners to seasoned advanced weavers. And when I say adventurous and beginners, all I mean is that they really um, have a basic understanding of reading a draft. That's about it. So the technique that I developed and named crimp cloth and I'm teaching is really a thought process. It's a, uh, two simple elements that are put together to look complicated. Uh, it consists of ground cloth and the pull pattern. Ground cloth is usually plain weaver twill and the pull pattern is whatever you come up with. I start out giving you suggestions. Um, actually, there's one little exercise, basic exercise. And then after that, I just have to kind of get out of the way because you get so many ideas that you want to try out. So uh, in the yarn use, I really encourage pulling from your stash or as Deb said, go to the vendor's hall and get some good stuff there. Uh, and a thermoplastic yarn, which is polyester or orlon. And I know that will be available in the vendor's hall uh, as well. Um, I will cover in the class, I will cover drafting, uh, weaving, uh, processing, we'll process the samples as we go, and I'll end with sewing tips. And let me just share my screen so that you can see um, some of the, let's see, where is it? Right here, I think, are you getting, okay. Let me see if I'm getting this right. Um, why isn't it sharing? Oh dear, I'm- It is, go over to the left and hit um, from the beginning or whatever that says. It's, oh, oh, I've, I'm sorry. Duh, I got the wrong screen. Oh, okay. Pulled up and I want it, yeah, I didn't- There you go. No, I want, no, that's not what I want. I want it from the beginning. <laughs> You know, it really works good when you don't have anybody in the room watching you. Okay, so when I'm saying two elements, you can see here uh, the picture on um, the left is as it is on the loom. And this happens to be, it's weft, this is a weft crimp piece. It is an overshot threading, but as you can see, that doesn't look like overshot. You're just using the threading. And in this case, um, the ground cloth is plain weave. Uh, the border right in the beginning was just is woven in um, overshot using the threading as tradition, um, but that's only for the ruffle. And then uh, from there it goes um, into the crimp pattern. Uh, here's another example. That one was a four shaft. This is an eight shaft. This happens to be a summer and winter um, threading. And the ground cloth on this, I think, was plain weave also, although I have a little trick that gives you something other than plain weave for a ground cloth off that threading. Totally found it in error. Uh, a lot of my things that I have learned have come from making mistakes first. They seem to be the best teacher of all. Uh, this next slide is this. Here's another one, weft crimp with it on the loom and what it looks like as a sample. Now, th this is... Uh, a sample, but the diff different uh, ideas that you can have different pull patterns in different areas. Here, it looks like a cable that could be used down the front of something. Now, this is a warp crimp piece. You can see the pull threads are in the warp here, and you see it on the loom as woven, and then on the right side are two of the possibilities of crimping the cloth um, I, on the loom is samples after they were uh, processed. Now, each registrant would bring a loom threaded to their choice of, of uh, threading. Um, the loom, loom choices are um, floor loom or table loom, minimum of four shafts. And here again, table loom is just great to use because you'll have so many ideas that you want to change the treadling on and you won't have to crawl under your loom to change the treadling, although I've got some ideas that keep you going without changing the treadling too often. Um, 
and I get off asked often, can you use a rigid heddle? Yes, you can use a rigid heddle. The only difference is when you're putting in the pull threads, you'll have to do it with pickup. But that really leaves you open to um, a lot of creative wandering. Um, and basically what this is, when I say it's a thought process, it is um, you get started uh, weaving and you're going to get so many ideas as you go what your next samples will be that's why we cut off and process every so often just to see what happens and what you like so that you can form that into something else I think one of the best things was one student came to me the second day and she said I didn't sleep at all last night and it's all your fault <laughs> she said she couldn't turn off her head it just going in Isn't so many directions that true? of Those what she can do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought that was great because that happens to me too. Like, all right, 2 a.m. And what am I thinking about? I wake up and I've got some idea in my head. So anyway, I just find it to be a great, um, well, it's just very creative. And so I so really enjoy let me, that. Let me ask you, uh, we'll go back to the, um, the warping instructions are going to be sent, correct? The warping instructions, yeah. I just haven't gotten to that yet. No, no. I mean, I just want to make sure because the people are going to be curious how they do. Oh it. yes, absolutely. Then, I send warping instructions, even though any threading will work. Okay. Um, I give threading suggestions. So uh, also, you'll get a source list of where you can find the polyester or. Oh, that was my next question. Thank besides you. the vendors hall, because all the people that are on the list. <laughs> will probably be in the vendor's hall. Also, I have a question. Will the vendor's hall be open through the workshops? Uh, it's open until Monday uh, evening. Oh, OK. So well, they'll just have to get their purchase, purchase their. Um, uh, yeah, they'll have everything. Thermal plastic, yeah. unless they're doing warp crimp, which they would uh, address their loom ahead of time and have to put the thermoplastic in the warp. Otherwise, okay. for the weft and Another thing that I do is I have the students share colors. So it's so much, so wonderful. The color interaction that right. happens with crimp right. is just like if you, um, uh, the, the one that I showed of the warp crimp, the stripes on the flat cloth, the stripes are, are going horizontal. But when you crimp that, where are the stripes? They're in the warp. It's like magic. Right. This is like ma making magic cloth. All right. Um, Thanks, Diane. Anyway, I, I appreciate it. <clears throat> are you? Can I set, show some more slides or am I done? We're done. Your, your time is up. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, because I had some really good stuff to show. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for garments if you're going to sell because one size fits all. Uh, they pack well, they don't wrinkle, and you don't have to iron them. So it's an anything goes workshop. You can't make a mistake because everything works. All right. How's that? Good. I encourage Thanks. people to go check out her uh, website if you want to see more of the beautiful things that you can make. And you know what? Diane is crimp cloth. You look up crimp cloth, you see Diane. So check this out. It's a three-day workshop, okay. Tuesday through Thursday. I did want to share my screen that has my contact information. We'll, we will put it in chat. How's that? That's perfect. All okay. right. Thank That's you. That's great. Thanks. Thanks Bye. for the opportunity. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Next up. We have Eileen Hallman. Eileen's going to talk about her 90 minute seminar, which is called Deep Structure. It's Friday, July 15th, a great way to start off Convergence Week. Hi, Eileen. Hi, happy to be here. So, um, my seminar, not a workshop this time, is my seminar is going to squeeze, if you can imagine, my almost 30 years of experience. Um, weaving with my hand spun singles as wefts uh, into a 90 minute session. So I spin mostly cotton on the charka and- um, Ellie, can you adjust your microphone please so we can- oh, I have to hold it up here maybe. There we go. Oh, there we yes. go. There Is we that go. that better? I'm sorry to be <laughs> so quiet. Um, so I have been using a, um, let's see. I can find this. If I can um, share my screen, do you see it? Yes, so it's I, a, a shuttle. My shuttle. Okay, so um, I have been weaving with my hand spun singles uh, using this shuttle 
uh, that holds the spindle to the charka. So I can just, um, I, don't, I don't normally do it immediately, but I can just take my spindle from the charka and go to the loop. So um, I need to get rid of this thing because there's my, okay. So I, um, I'm an inveterate experimentalist. I love sampling. So if you don't like to weave samples, um, then you can learn from my experience. So I'll have charts, tables, formulas, and those will be uh, in the handout that will go out. Um, <clears throat> I'll cover yarn and fiber properties, including shrinkage, texture, direction and twist energy, and while most of the discussion will focus on the energy of the weft, we'll also cover how the differences between the warp and weft yards relate to the final product. Then we'll look at weave structure, um, including set, float length, um, sampling for contraction, and even weaving, weaving mechanics, including warp tension, V, et cetera. Um, let's see. Then we'll go on to texture due to weave structure and texture due to yarn energy. Um, and then how to create texture by combining both the energy and the structure. So of course, there'll be lots of pictures and physical examples, including tracking and the um, crinkle fabrics, um, fabrics that are woven as rectangles, but um, shape themselves during the finishing. Um, and then some, let's see, this on the left is a scarf that has um, ridges and valleys. And then on the right is a piece of fabric that has scalloped edges due to the weave structure and the set combination with, um, with, the, with the yarn and the, and the uh, structure. So, um, I guess that's kind of the whirlwind uh, tour of it. Here, here is a little sample that has some plain weave, or not plain weave, but twill and some, some ribbing. And here, if you want to do large floats with a high energy yarn, you can get little loops. And here is one that um, I call this weft terry. It's a flat cloth on the front face, but on the back, it's got little terry loops, and these are due to the um, shrinkage of the ground cloth, um, allowing loops to be made with the um, high energy yarn on the back. So um, that's basically it for, um, for my, uh, let's see, for my, my talk. So what will they need to bring to your session? Oh, their smiling faces and some enthusiasm. So it's not a hands-on, so it's going to be just- um, Can you put your mic back up? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hands-on, so it's, it's just, you know, um, listening and watching and, you know, <laughs> asking questions. I mean, they can bring a notebook if they want to scribble things, but I'll have a handout. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Eileen. I appreciate this. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, and so this is going to involve crepe twist yarns, and they didn't used to be uh, available readily, and now they are. Um, I, I don't see a vendor list yet. I don't think they have one up on the website, but we're hoping that there's a, there's a new company that's offering crepe twist yarns, and I'm hoping that they'll be there. I used to say that this was a class for uh, spinners who wove, but you don't even need to be a spinner because these high energy yarns are available commercially now. All right. Thank you, Eileen. I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Um, next up, we have uh, Melissa Weaver Dunning. She's doing Introduction to Hand Spindles. It's a three hour seminar. It's Monday, July 18th. Um, hello, Melissa. Welcome. Hi. Glad to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me to participate. It's good to have you here. So my class is for absolute beginners. You don't need to have any experience whatsoever. 
And I will be bringing um, spindles for all the students to use in class, as well as the materials. Um, but students are certainly welcome to bring both any interesting spindles they may have, whether they've tried them out before or not. Um, and also they're welcome to bring any fibers that they have questions about how to use. And I do have just a little bitty slideshow. Keynote. Um, yes. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's having fun today. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Only we're not at the beginning. Okay. So, um, this is my teacher, Norman Kennedy, who's originally from Scotland, and he's spinning wool here using a distaff and a grasp spindle, which is one of the spindle types we'll be looking at. Here is a Breton lady also using a distaff and a grasp spindle. That means she doesn't ever let go of her spindle. And that's a lot of what you see in a lot of the old, old fashioned spinners. They would be walking, they would be doing all kinds of things, and they hold their spindle in a way that they never release it. And they spun a lot, a lot of wool this way. This lady has a really big, um, what we call a cop, a large amount of um, singles on her spindle. And here are some young women, uh, I think this is in Andalusia, who are out walking to watch the goats to keep them from out of other people's fields and they are spinning for their dowry clothing. So they wouldn't let go of their spindles if they suppose they had to run all of a, all of a sudden. <laughs> and here's a lady who's leading a team of oxen. Oxen actually won't plow in a straight line unless they have somebody walking in front of them. So she's very happily using a distaff and a grasp spindle. And then one last grasp spindle also with a distaff. And then we have some ladies who are spinning, I call this a tossed spindle, but um, Norman doesn't like that term and I haven't found one that he likes better. So we'll stick with that. And they're providing twists just by tossing that spindle, causing the spindle to turn in their hand. And then we also have some thigh spindles. This is an, a very old photograph of Navajo spinners. And here we have a lady in Mexico using a thigh spindle, a long spindle that you roll along your thigh. And we will also be using um, suspended spindles that are more commonly known as drop spindles. Um, so we're gonna look at a lot of different spindle types as well as supported spindle. Okay, I think that's all the words I have for spindles. <laughs> that's great. There'll be a quiz later. Um, so there's actually going to be spinning going on, right? This is a, yes. Is this just is a lecture? This is a three-hour hands-on class, but you don't need to bring anything to the class at all. Oh, that sounds like a great deal. Yeah. All right. Well, thank Should you so fun. much. This You're looks very wonderful, welcome. Melissa Weaver Dunning. Knows all there is to know about hand spindles. Go check it out. It's a three-hour seminar. It will be Monday, July the 18th. Thank you so much, Melissa. We appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who um, joined us today. If you're interested in class, if one of these classes look like something you want to take, register online at weavespindie.org slash sessions. And remember that all the information that you need is there, how to register, description of the classes. If you want to find out more about the teachers, you can get information there also. More information about hotels are online, uh, the Marriott downtown. Crown Plaza, the Hyatt, the Cumberland House, uh, they all have rooms available. I got a couple of calls about this already today. Be sure you use the link on the, on the um, website. If you call the hotel, you may get someone who knows nothing about conventions and will not be able to give you the hotel, I mean the convergence rate. So be sure you use the link. So join us this summer, July 15th through the 21st. We'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee, lovely town. If you're interested in Lamp Appalachia, this is your convergence. So thank you all for coming today. We will have more leaders this week. Uh, check it out on our website and have a great day.